Princess Anne, often seen as the most beloved royal, has long been admired for her unwavering duty and lifelong selflessness. She has always put others first, embodying the spirit of service that defines the monarchy. After Queen Elizabeth's passing, Anne once again prioritized family with a gesture that deeply moved King Charles. Let's explore her tragedy-filled life and the background of her crucial decisions, and discover how Princess Anne finally revealed her tragic message to King Charles, shocking everyone. Many expect a princess's life to be a fairy tale, but Anne's has been marked by tragedy since her earliest years. Born on August 15, 1950, at Clarence House, Anne was the second child and only daughter of Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Her early years were far from the fairy tale many imagine for royalty. Born into privilege, Princess Anne's childhood was marked by duty and expectations. At 18 months, Anne's life changed when her mother became Queen Elizabeth Roman II in 1952, making her mother not just a parent but the reigning monarch. Like Prince Charles, Anne was cared for by governesses, including Mabel Anderson, and received her early education within Buckingham Palace, tutored to understand the world. Though normal for royals, this system left little room for typical parent-child bonds. Many have described Queen Elizabeth as a distant mother due to her royal duties, an image Anne has consistently refuted. In a 2002 interview, Anne defended her mother, stating there was no evidence to suggest she wasn't affectionate. This parenting style mirrored Queen Elizabeth's own childhood, also raised with some distance by governesses and tutors, while her parents handled royal duties. Anne's education followed a similar pattern. In 1963, she was sent to Benenden School, a prestigious boarding school in Kent. At 13, she left home's comfort and security, separating from family to join her classmates. This separation, though common for royal children, was a challenging transition. During her time at Benenden, Anne continued her studies and developed a strong sense of independence. When she left school in 1968, she had earned six GCE O-levels and two A-levels, quite an achievement for someone carrying royal expectations. Though her academic career mattered, her passion for equestrianism began to take center stage in her life. This love of horses would become one of her defining traits, leading to numerous achievements in competitive sports. Princess Anne's equestrian career is perhaps one of the most notable aspects of her life. In the early 1970s, she emerged as a talented, dedicated writer, competing at the highest levels of international equestrianism. In 1971, she won the individual title at the European Eventing Championships, a feat that cemented her place in the equestrian world. This victory also made her the first British royal to win a European championship in any sport. Her dedication to equestrianism continued over the years, leading her to represent Great Britain at the Olympic Games. At the 1976 Montreal Olympics, she competed in eventing, facing challenges, but staying committed to her passion for horses. Equestrianism gave Anne purpose, freeing her from royal protocols and allowing her to excel in a field where being a princess didn't guarantee success. Despite these achievements, Anne's royal duties shaped her life. At 18, she began royal duties, facing the complexities of public life. Royal tours in the 1970s were a particularly challenging aspect. These appearances aimed to connect royals with the British public. But for Anne, these walkabouts were difficult, especially as a teenager. In a candid interview, she admitted to hating them. Anne's equestrian successes gave her a sense of personal achievement, but didn't shield her from the complexities of royal life. She often expressed resentment towards the obligations and expectations placed on her, a sentiment reflected in her remark that being born a princess wasn't something she'd asked for. As Queen Elizabeth Roman II, second child, Anne has always held a unique position in the royal family. While Charles prepared to be king, 
and carved her path through equestrian achievements and tireless dedication to royal duties. Her early life taught her the value of sacrifice, which she upholds even now as her brother serves as king. Princess Anne's personal life is far from the perfect image typically expected of royalty. Her first marriage to Mark Phillips, a captain of the Royal Dragoon Guards, began with immense public interest and fanfare. They met at an equestrian event in 1968, and their shared passion for horses seemed a promising foundation for their relationship. Engaged in May 1973, they wed months later in a grand Westminster Abbey ceremony watched by over 100 million people worldwide. Despite the fairy tale start, their marriage soon became tainted by scandal. Rumors swirled about infidelities, with gossip columns filled with tales of extramarital affairs. Phillips was linked to various women, including a British TV host, a Canadian PR executive, and even an Indian socialite. The main speculation centered on Major Timothy Lawrence, who was the Queen's equerry at the time. By 1989, the marriage had fallen apart, and the couple announced their separation. The final blow came when it was revealed Phillips had fathered a child during a one-night stand with Heather Tonkin, a New Zealand artist. A DNA test later confirmed his paternity, further fueling the scandal. The couple officially divorced in 1992, ending a marriage marred by public and private controversies. Anne's second marriage, however, was much more low-key. She wed Major Timothy Lawrence in December 1992 in a private ceremony at Crathy Kirk near Balmoral. This time, only 30 guests attended the wedding, a stark contrast to the grandeur of her first. Anne wore a simple white jacket and knee-length dress, far from the elaborate gown she had worn at Westminster Abbey. Timothy received no noble title, and the couple led a quiet life. Despite past scandals, Anne found lasting peace with Timothy away from the spotlight. If we listed all Princess Anne's hardships, you'd be amazed at what she's endured. One of the scariest events in her life happened on March 20, 1974, as she and then-husband Mark Phillips returned to Buckingham Palace from a charity event. While driving on the mall, a Ford Escort blocked their path, forcing them to stop. What followed was a dramatic and dangerous kidnapping attempt. The Ford Escort driver, Ian Ball, jumped out armed with a gun, firing multiple shots and wounding several people, including Anne's bodyguard James Beaton and her driver Alex Callender. A nearby reporter, Brian McConnell, also tried to intervene but was shot as well. Ball's plan was to kidnap Princess Anne and demand a ransom but Anne wasn't one to back down easily. When Ball told her to exit the car, she replied, not a chance. The situation might have turned tragic if not for Ron Russell, a passerby and former boxer who snapped out of shock and decided to act. With a quick punch to Ball's neck, he distracted the kidnapper and helped Anne escape. Police arrived shortly and arrested Ball after a brief chase. Though Anne was physically unharmed, the incident shocked the nation. Her brother, now King Charles, was deeply worried about her safety and later pushed for increased royal security measures. The kidnapping attempt wasn't the only challenge Princess Anne faced. Just two years later, in 1976, she prepared to compete in the Montreal Olympics as part of the British equestrian team. A skilled horsewoman, Anne had inherited her mother's love for horses and was determined to represent her country. But fate intervened when she suffered a serious accident during a training session. Her horse fell and trampled her, causing a concussion and fractured vertebra. For most people, such an injury would have ended any hope of competing, but not for Anne. Despite losing memory of the accident and spending days in the hospital, she recovered remarkably within weeks and was riding again, determined to make the Olympic team, and she did. In 2002, Princess Anne made headlines again, this time for an incident with her dog, Dottie. 
while walking her three dogs, two boys on bikes passed by, and Dottie chased them, knocking them down. The situation escalated, and Anne was accused of not controlling her dog. Unlike most royals who live under a veil of immunity, Anne faced the consequences. She pleaded guilty in court, paid fines, and Dottie was ordered to receive proper training. This incident made Anne the only British royal with a criminal record. Her brother, King Charles, who admired her practical approach, reportedly supported her quietly. In 2021, Anne faced personal loss with the death of her father, Prince Philip, at 99. Just over a year later, in September 2022, her mother, Queen Elizabeth Roman II, passed away at 96. Losing both parents in such a short time was devastating for the entire royal family. Yet, Anne, ever strong and steadfast, became a pillar of support for King Charles as he ascended the throne. Sources say she was crucial in managing family matters in the days following her mother's death. She even greeted the new king when he arrived at Balmoral to mourn his mother. Anne's ability to stay calm and carry on, even amid great personal loss, has earned her respect from both the public and her family. King Charles often relies on her for advice and strength, knowing she'll always keep a level head. Charles and Anne share a unique bond that runs deeper than many realize. With only 21 months between them, they shared much of their childhood at Buckingham Palace after their mother's coronation. The two siblings were often cared for by nannas and governesses, while the Queen and Prince Philip attended to royal duties. In those early years, their close age fostered a tight bond, though Anne's independent spirit often challenged her brother's future role as king. Even as a child, Anne was known for her confidence and assertiveness, often taking charge to the amusement of those around her. Her love for horses and outdoor activities strengthened their bond during their youth. Charles and Anne enjoyed horseback riding, attending polo matches, and spending time in the countryside together. Anne's adventurous spirit and athletic achievements sometimes led her to outperform her older brother in physical activities. Charles, more sensitive and introspective, always admired Anne's confidence and resilience, even when she teased him playfully. Despite their sibling rivalry, Charles and Anne have always shared a deep sense of duty to their family and the royal institution. Their closeness became evident during major royal events, particularly after their mother's death in 2022, 